Hey science classes, welcome back. If you check out uh, today's video lesson uh, with science, I uh, just want to go over quickly uh, the one board of notes. Remember, I always try and keep it to one board of notes um, just to try and make it really clear and make sure that we're not writing too much, not getting overwhelmed by you know writing instead of really paying attention to what's going on. But also, I do want you to take the time to physically write the notes. It turns out that we remember things, we internalize things, we really understand things much better when you actually take the time to physically write them rather than just take a shot of the board and put that in your notes and think, well, that's it for the day. Um, I wanted to mention that because a lot of students in school, and you're gonna be seeing this in seventh grade and eighth grade and beyond, are saying, hey, uh, you know, teacher, can I take a, a picture of the board? It's okay sometimes, but um, I had a wonderful high school biology teacher by the name of Mr. Fry at Cappuccino High School, and he would have us rewrite, he would encourage us to, it wasn't required, but he would encourage us to rewrite our notes in our, in our own words. Um, if we had uh, copied it real quickly in class, if we were, if we were just um, coming in and popping in and looking it on the board, take the time to physically write it. It turns out physical writing, the actual act of writing, uh, you remember things much better than even when you type. So I just wanted to point that out. Uh, current events today, um, I'm not just going to fly past the current events, there's something I want to mention here that's, uh, that's on CNN 10 today that's worth mentioning. Uh, one note please on UFOs, there was a thing in the news recently where they were re, what's the word, unclassifying some uh, videos of unidentified flying objects, um, so please make sure you make a note of that very quickly. Also they do an excellent story on exploring our oceans, we talked a lot about our oceans in this class, everything from the water cycle to how our oceans are really in distress. Everything from coral bleaching to ocean acidification to um, just the, the, the rise in temperatures and the amount of plastic that's in our ocean right now. Plastic is almost roughly displacing uh, plankton in terms of uh, biomass, in terms of how much is in our oceans. Really serious thing here. Uh, very, very, very quickly back to the UFO thing. I would argue I would spend a little bit of time on, on this in class if we were in class together right now and mention this is kind of one of the reasons that you have science class. When you look at your lessons that you have in English and math and science and social studies, you know, why those particular lessons? You should be thinking about this. Why do we have those as the subjects in school? UFOs is a great one. Um, if you look at a lot of opinions, a lot of people say, oh, UFOs, it must be proof that aliens and life is out there visiting Earth and flying saucers. Remember, in science, it's all about probability. Um, if you ever hear someone say, well, it's a scientifically proven fact that, that your ears should kind of pop up and say, well, wait a second. And science is really about what's more likely. Um, are UFOs spaceships from other planets that are coming to visit Earth to check us out? While that is a possibility, it's highly, highly improbable. And those are the things that we want to learn about in science. What's possible, what's probable. Quick, quick example, in sixth grade, one of the standards that we teach about is you learn about the uh, ancient Egypt, the building of the pyramids and such. Um, there was, and still is, several programs on TV, it's things you can find on the internet, all about Oh, how ancient aliens visited Earth and helped people or built themselves the pyramids. You know, people didn't do it, but ancient aliens did. I uh, had a very good intention person come up to me when they found out I was a science teacher and say, Oh, hey, did you see that great special? That shows how aliens probably built the pyramids. Again, this is why we have science class. Yeah, things are possible, but is that likely? Probably not. No, if you look at um, the, the evidence. Any time you make an extraordinary statement in science, then you have to back it up with some pretty extraordinary evidence. You have to back it up with, that's why I love, love, love science. You can make all the claims and the statements that you want. That's great. But then the burden is on you to back that up with evidence. That's why we're in this class. So if you check out uh, what we're doing on the notes today, the one page of notes today, the Wednesday notes, if you go to the blog or if you go to Google Classroom and check those out, there's a lot in there. And I just want to clarify it. <clears throat> if you look up on the board, one of the things that we've talked a lot about in class is levels of organization. We start off with atoms. Well, where did atoms come from? And we show the evidence, how we know, at least how we think we know, that 14 billion years ago, plus or minus, there was the Big Bang, which began our universe. Let's say our universe might be a multiverse. We talked a little bit about that on the side, just for fun. But it began in our universe. The first atom in that universe, the first type of atom, basically was hydrogen. Um, those build up to make molecules. Now, if you look at the levels of organization, 
really a lot of it in biology is about looking at how smaller units get together to make bigger and more complicated units. So atoms get together to make molecules. We did a little bit of background on atoms. What are they, where they came from? Turns out atoms aren't the end of the story. When you get into, oh, let me think, eighth grade physics, I believe, is about where we started with the NGSS, the science standards right now. You find out that atoms are in turn, made of even smaller particles, protons, neutrons, electrons. And yes, guess what? Uh, some of those are made of even smaller particles still. But for our purposes right now, just think of atoms as the building blocks. It's our starting point. Atoms get together to make molecules. If you're checking out our notes today, oh great, you've got the molecules. What do they do? Well, that's where chemistry comes in. You've got the molecules building up to make amino acids. Well, amino acids, what do they do? Well, they build up to make the proteins. You are made of literally tens of thousands of different types of proteins. If you look at the building up, we've gone from atoms to molecules. Molecules get together to make, for example, amino acids. Um, molecules also, for example, link into very, very long, long, long molecules, polymers we call those, like deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA. Um, on our notes today, we're starting to learn about the structure of DNA. What does it look like in chemistry? There's four parts to the DNA, and again, I'm not gonna go over the notes too, too much because you can read those yourself online, but if you look at the four bases to DNA, A, T, C's, and G's, um, it's a little bit about the structure. What does it look like? Why is it put together that way? In chemistry, it has a lot to do with the shape, but the overview, the big picture I want you to get here is a little bit about levels of organization, how things build up. Quick little side note too, on graphic organizers. Um, the next time that we put some notes out there, there'll be a graphic organizer in there. And I know you've seen these in other classes, English class, things like that. And they are a fantastic way of just kind of trying to keep things straight in science. And science is a lot of content. And for example, here's one that we've had already at one point during the year. So I'm not asking you to write this one down right now. Um, if you want to, certainly go ahead. But if you check out, we did a little bit on the kingdoms of life. Uh, right now, we recognize six kingdoms of life. If you check out the six kingdoms of life, um, when I was in eighth grade, they were doing five kingdoms of life. And I point that out, but why is it six kingdoms now? Well, science is a, a living subject. It's always changing as we find out new things. Uh, by the time you are you know, high school and beyond, there might be seven or eight kingdoms, and I'll talk about why in just a second. But the point is, this isn't static. That I means science doesn't stand still. That's the great part about it. It's constantly being refreshed and renewed. Um, a quick example of a great way that we use graphic organization, as I encourage you to do this yourself, is, hey, look at the board over here. Well, what is life? Well, life is made of cells. Cells in our textbook and what we've been learning in here are the basic unit of life. I have asked you also to do notes on viruses. Well, are viruses cells? No. Does that mean they're living? Most scientists say no. Other scientists would argue this, that viruses are a living thing. They just sort of hijack the, uh, the mechanics of, uh, of a cell to do their reproduction. Um, in general, viruses are often referred to as particles. They're not living, so they're not even on this graphic organizer. Graphic organizers are a great way to help you keep track of all the stuff that we have learned, for example, about cells. Um, well, what types of cells are there? Well, there's two types that we've talked about in class. There's prokaryotes and eukaryotes, prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Prokaryotics are the types of cells that don't have a nucleus. Eukaryotic cells do. I just want to point out this graphic organizer as you can go as deep into these as you want. They're wonderful, wonderful tools. Um, well, wait, prokaryotic uh, cells, those are bacteria. Well, you've got uh, type of bacteria that we, it used to just be recognized as one type of bacteria. Now, hey, wait a second. There's um, archaea bacteria or ancient bacteria. Bacteria that, that kingdom recently has divided. Uh, once we found out that there was a type of bacteria, extremophiles, it could live in extreme environments. It turned out that they decided to give those type of bacteria, those type of prokaryotes, their own kingdom. We di divided it up. Um, that's a lot to keep track of. Graphic organizers are just pictures that can help you keep track of things. A little bit like factor trees in, in, in math class. 
eukaryotic cells you might remember oh eukaryotic those are the type with nucleus uh, with the nuclei and also they usually have organelles they always have organelles that have special functions in them well what types of cells are those oh i can look at my graphic organizer i can remind myself that they're protists plants animals fungus fungi um, if you look at this kingdom here special quick note on protists protists are generally one uh, celled organisms really complicated uh, uh, kingdom there. As a matter of fact, this is the kingdom that you're most likely gonna see subdivided in the next couple of years because there's some protists that make their food through photosynthesizing. There's some protists that eat other things to get their food. There are, however, protists that when there is uh, sunlight around, they, they photosynthesize. When there is no sunlight available, uh, they, they might um, uh, eat for food. So if you check out the kingdom right here, some scientists have referred to it as a junk drawer kingdom. It's kind of a place you put one cell organisms where you're not quite sure uh, where to categorize it. That one you'll probably likely see subdivided pretty soon. The point is, I know I talked a lot here and I always try and get in in about 10 minutes or so. The point is this, a quick overview of everything that we've done on today's notes. I want you just to kind of get the general impression that it's just a building up thing. You go from atoms to molecules and then Chemistry in life is all about, oh, what are the different types of molecules? Well, there's amino acids and DNA and these different types of molecules. And a great way, and you'll see it tomorrow when we do our graphic organizer with DNA and amino acids, um, a great way to keep track of all the different terms and things that we're learning in science right now is with graphic organizers to organize it yourself. And again, I really encourage you, a lot of students say, well, wait a second, why do I have to write down the notes again if you have them on the board? I can snap a picture, I can even print out that picture and put it in my notebook. You can, but you remember things much, much better when you actually do the visible act of writing, coloring, making the notes yours. That's uh, one of the things that you learn, uh, especially when you're reading over your notes for a test. Um, very, very often, if you take great notes, visually you remember where you've put things on the page, and you won't even have to refer to the notes that much as you've taken the time to really make the notes uh, yours instead of just snapping a picture or putting copies in your, in your notebook. I uh, hope you're having a great, great day and uh, looking forward to seeing you guys in person. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.